What is up, Watch Fam? Happy Tuesday, and welcome to In the Metal. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today we're going to be diving into six new but vintage uh, watch additions to the watch shop at theoandharris.com. Uh, they're from Rolex, DeSotos, Dufante, Cartier, Rolex again, and then a killer uh, Tudor sub. Let's roll the intro. Okay, so let's get a running start uh, and go ahead with this first Rolex. Uh, it's a date just, but I view this watch as um, kind of like a no loss compromise. Uh, it's a reference 16030, which makes it a quick set date, which is exactly what I'm talking about here. This watch retained or maintained all of the vintage appeal, the 36 millimeter case, the thick steel lugs, the classic engine turned bezel. I mean, everything about a vintage date just that we love. Um, but what Rolex added, and this was manufactured in 1986, um, was a quick set date function, uh, which makes it incredibly easy to just pop out the crown uh, and set the date. In contrast, the date just that this particular model seceded uh, did not have that quick set date function. So if you're like me, the date is never correct. Uh, and if you're not like me, uh, you have a lot, a lot of work on your hands to, to control that date. But with this 16030, you get the best of both worlds. You know, that, that, that classic vintage styling, and the modern function. And if that little technological advancement, which makes a huge difference, uh, wasn't enough, we've got a mint gray Buckley dial here. It's just mint and untouched. There isn't a single blemish in the dial. I'm an enormous, enormous fan of Buckley dials, uh, probably for three reasons. Uh, one, they're rare. Two, they really are beautiful. And three, they're so um, obvious. You know what I'm trying to say? I mean, it, it's hard to explain. I mean, underlines in the vintage Rolex world are rare but you can't really tell they exist. But with a Buckley dial, it's rarity, it comes in proclamation. You know, it's, it's super obvious and in your face that this is a rare watch. So uh, yes, we're very proud to be offering it. Next watch. Uh, we've got a DeSotos chronograph here, which really doesn't mean anything to me or anybody, but, but what does mean something um, is its kind of category of watch. It's a Valjoux 7733 chronograph with a panda dial. I mean, that is a recipe uh, for success. And although I know a lot of people are down on the whole gold plating thing, um, and for good reason, I mean, you know, gold plating isn't solid gold. It doesn't last forever. Uh, but to me, uh, I, I really don't have a problem with it as long as it's in, you know, good condition. And if you really take a look at this watch as I am now, you see very little wear um, slightly on the lugs, but overall, uh, it's in it's in quite good condition, and the dial is flawless. So even for someone like me who is admittedly uh, not a chronograph fanatic, I can appreciate just the classic beauty uh, of this watch. It kind of embodies sports watches. You know, I mean, this is probably the sports watch look um, of you know the 20th century, oddly enough. So moving on. We've got another a watch here from a company called Dufante, um, which is which is, is kind of funny. I mean, this is a subsidiary company of Lucien Picard. Um, Dufante became a very watch manufacturer. Uh, I think in the 80s or, or 70s into 80s, they made some really garbage like Rolex uh, Date 8 ripoffs. Um, they were really, really bad watches. Uh, but this watch, I was blown away with when I actually got the handle. Just on the surface, we've got a couple of great uh, assets in it. That fluted bezel to me, although Ro Rolex definitely owns it, it is a beautiful accent. Um, and I think that standing alone, considering nothing else is stolen from Rolex, it isn't like a robbed watch. You know, it isn't a watch that is totally uh, uninspired. Uh, actually, it's quite the contrary. If you look even further at those crispy steel, you know, twisted lugs, and even further beyond that, at these sharp, funky numerals, I mean, that two looks like a Z. I just find it all around a very, very attractive watch, um, almost oddly original in design, you know, which is the opposite of what Dufante became. So yeah, I'm, I'm very, very aggressive on this. Okay, moving on, we've got a watch from one of my favorite manufacturers of all time, uh, Cartier. And this is a Tortue uh, model, which is actually a little bit different than the Tonneau. Um, I actually like this model better. It's a little bit more stubby and it has more beef to it, uh, which I really appreciate. Of course, this is not a man's watch, uh, so it looks kind of funny on my wrist, even though I probably would wear this just to be 
just have some fun one night. But it is a woman's watch. But I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, truly, I mean, women's watches get such a hard time because so many people put such little thought uh, into designing them and little money into manufacturing them, they cheap out. But this watch is the exact opposite. It is uh, like 100% true to the quality uh, that the Cartier brand for the most part, uh, has stood for since its foundation. So I'm extremely aggressive uh, on this watch, and believe me, it kind of hurts that I won't be giving it to my mom, because that would be like the coolest thing ever. But moving on, uh, a Rolex Datejust reference 1601. I'll be brief on this one. It dates to 1972. It's got a beautiful mint white gold fluted bezel and a gray sunburst style. This is not something we see often at all. Uh, gray dials are probably within the top I don't know, four or five rarest, you know, date just dials. Uh, and beyond that, they're just beautiful. Especially in this sunburst texture. I am an enormous, like hopelessly in love uh, fan uh, of date just and a particularly, you know, this kind of color. And finally, we've got a Tudor Prince Oyster date. It's actually a Submariner, which is not something you see on Theo and Harris very often, um, and regretfully so. I think I have to delve into that world a little bit more because there is so much to you know appreciate. But this watch is a reference 75090, and it dates to 1992, and it's just a beautiful piece. From steel oyster bracelet and case to Mercedes hands, I mean, it's classic, classic Rolex, um, but, Rolex never experimented with dial colors uh, and bezel colors like this until their, you know, white gold Submariner, which is markedly more expensive. Um, these watches, to me, represent just so much value. Really, where in the Submariner world are you going to find something in this kind of condition for under $4,000 uh, and have true Submariner heritage, not just like a ripoff? Um, nowhere. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of In The Metal. We really brought the heat today. I am very, very excited for this. So don't forget to check out these watches in the watch shop at theoandharris.com. Anna brought the heat in her photography. So go over there right now and check it out.